this video we'll be continuing our journey through the Train Block C mod. You may notice slight changes in the visuals as I added the better foliage mod and some others. But like the last video, links to the Gen Game site and a media of her link to my updated mod pack are in the description. We left off by finishing Piccolo Jr. So the next chapter on our checklist would be the Saiyan Saga. But I oriented myself on the anime, so I took some time to finally start with our base. I wanted it to be in the Dragon Ball style, like those half ball like houses and a clean white block. For the material I needed to gather dirty stones, which I could get by mining it in the dirty stony biome. Then I had to melt the dirty cobblestone and craft the dirty stones together to make the basic wall stone. Now I was able to start with building the house's exterior. After that I added the interior, which mostly is in the basement, where I placed my chests, furnaces, nether portal, and the workbench and my enchantment table. After that I was able to finally move our chest content to our new base. Then I terraformed the area around our arena and increased its size. While flying around, I also gathered some sugarcane and killed cows and horses for leather because the enchantment area was still missing some bookshelves. It didn't take long to realize that a cow farm would most probably benefit me a lot because you use a lot of food as well in the playthrough of this mod. So I made a little wheat field next to our house. Simultaneously to the crops growing, I built a little barn behind the house and lured some cows in there. With that, I finished our base and so I started gathering the dragon balls again to summon Shenron. This time I left the shader off to see if the clouds would turn dark and they did indeed. Instead of Kachin charts, I wished for Janemba Essence this time because you can build the Dimension Sword. All along this process I've been doing the shadow boxing and concentration training, so I felt pretty confident to start with the Saiyan Saga. The first fight of this saga was against 6 Cybermen and they were relatively easy to beat. One of them dropped me a seed that I immediately used to fight a weaker Cyberman and get some additional TP before fighting Reddits. This fight had a pretty close call, but in the end I beat him. For continuing, I wanted to meet King Kai and train with him. So I let these Tiger and Bear Bandits kill me. This took like forever, because they only did between 10 and 40 damage, but they eventually managed to end me, and with that we were sent to the other world. I instantly passed Master Enmar to follow the snake trail, which, like the bandits killing me, took forever even with fast flying. Once I finally reached King Kai's planet, I received some weights from him. Which, together with the increased gravity of his planet, debuffed me very much. Sadly, my usual training was not available yet, so I had to fight my clone. But I realized very quickly that I couldn't die against him, because I already was considered dead. So I used this opportunity and exploited the weights and gravity to max out my TP gain. With this training, I also learned what the blue and yellow bar thing at the right meant. 
When there was no yellow and just blue, I only did one damage, so I had to block some hits to do my real damage again. I learned the Kaioken, Key Boost and the Spirit Bomb from King Kai before returning to Master Enma. He allowed me to revive and I went home to gear up for the next fight, where I had to fight 12 Cybermen. The hard thing here is being attacked by 12 enemies at the same time because of the buffing I learned at King Kai's. They don't do much damage to me, but make me hit like a wet noodle pretty fast. After that came Nappa and Vegeta. I was really scared of this fight as I usually struggle with it a lot and this time was no different. Like the tambourine fight in the last video, I had to fly away every time after I engaged in close combat to heal. With both the of them following me, the I decided to use the spirit the bomb for the first time. <laughs> Almost killing Nappa. But after some more back and forth, I was able to defeat Nappa and later Vegeta, who was able to escape to Namek. But before chasing him, I visited Goku and Gohan and learned Key Protection and Key Infuse. Then I activated the Never Portal to gather some Clothstone Powder. With that, we would be able to upgrade our Scouter to Tier 2 with the Tier 2 Tech, which was really expensive. Arriving on Namek, I immediately got in trouble because I wanted to help these Namekians, but I accidentally hit them, forcing me to kill some of them to survive, sending me to the evil side. To make up for it, I fought some Freezer soldiers, 9 to be exact, and they showed me that this really was some next level saga, forcing me to eat one and my first Sensu Bean. But that didn't stop me from continuing with Gui. Sorry, I'm a foreigner. I don't know how you pronounce him. It was a lot easier. Most probably because he was alone, like the next two enemies, Dodoria and Sabon. After fighting them, I received a Namekian Dragon Ball and a Dragon Raider. The following fight was against the whole Ginyu Force and they destroyed me big time. I traveled back to Namek and tried it again. This time I activated Kaioken 20 but forgot to increase our potential. Luckily only Goldo followed me into the air and I was able to fire a spirit bomb on the other four Ginyu Force members and kill him before they reached me. After Goldo, I finished Bertha, following with Ginyu and Cheese, leaving Rikum as the last member of the five. But before trying Frieza, I wanted to search for Namekian Dragon Balls. I already had three, so I thought it wouldn't take so long. Boy, was I wrong. The first like hour, I forgot to deactivate the shader again, and then it took me around three hours to find the remaining four Dragon Balls. Then I was able to summon Purunga, who granted me three wishes. I chose the Janemba Essence and Small Club to finish the Dimension Sword and Sensu Beans for the fight against Freezer. But I wasn't prepared for what followed. I thought that every freezer form would have its own initial battle, but he just transforms in fight and so he was able to kill me with no struggle at all. So again I went back to Namek and gathered my stuff, but I only had a few pork chop left, so I punched some blue trees, made a pickaxe and some furnaces to cook the dinosaur meat I've been collecting. Then I trained a little bit and tried again. This time, I took the time he transformed to his final form to load a spirit bomb that would do almost 1500 damage while it's costing me almost all of my key. So I had to charge while Freezer chased me in his 100% form, which was kinda good actually because I forgot to increase my potential again. Recharging my potential and key 
I transformed into the Super Saiyan I bought from the training when I was cooking the dinosaur meat. But instead of being OP, I still had to be careful and plus the Kamehamehas and keyboards in Freezer's direction. And finally ending the Freezer saga with a faithful punch in his face. I traveled back to Earth, crafted the Dimension Sword and decided to pay Kami a visit and let him cut my tail. Because, to be honest, it's aesthetically more pleasing to be a Super Saiyan without a tail and I never used the Ozaru form anyway. With that I was prepared to continue our journey further. But for now, that's it with this video. I hope you enjoyed this video as I had quite fun making it and like to continue with this series. I'm really enjoying doing these videos recently and playing through this mod. If you in fact like this type of content, please consider to leave a like and subscribe and maybe even comment your suggestions and thoughts. And I hope to see you in the next one, dear Tarnished.